Okay, so now that we know what the single cells look like, both the normal, ordinary thunderstorm cell and the super thunderstorm cell, we're going to talk about thunderstorm systems, where basically we have multiple cells working, um, uh, living their lives, going through those three same stages, though. Each cell will be uh, start out as a cumulus stage, just an updraft, and then we'll get the mature stage of the thunderstorm cell, updraft and a downdraft, we'll have precipitation, remember... The mature stage is where we have all the nasty weather. And then the thunderstorm cell will, will dissipate, and we call that the dissipating stage, and have only a downdraft. But we have these weather systems where we have more than one thunderstorm cell going um, uh, at various stages in its life at the same time. There are two types of multi-cell thunderstorm systems. There's the squall line, and you may have heard of those before, the squall line of thunderstorms. And then there is what we call the blob of thunderstorms. Uh, I, call, I call it the blob, but it's called the mesoscale convective complex. And you're going to see that this is a bunch of cells that are kind of in a blob. So starting with the squall line. And actually, a squall line of thunderstorms, we are probably in our neck of the woods most familiar with a cold front creating this squall line of thunderstorms. So if we, if we picture cold air coming down from the north, Here's my, it should be blue, right, if it was on the weather map, but we can tell it's a cold front because I've made these kind of sparky marks here. And it, the cold fronts have, are lifting warm air up that are in, is in front of them. Remember, cold air is nice and dense and it's hugging the ground. And so what we get along this uh, cold front is a good lifting mechanism to uh, go ahead and lift that warm. And if it's moist air, heck, then you can go ahead and get the, uh, a series of thunderstorm cells developing along that cold front. So actually this is a radar image and you see this you can imagine is a uh, cold front here right in front of all of that lifting and check out those little circles or excuse me that little colored area would be indicating um, thunderstorms, thunderstorm cells. So squall lines can be very long um, extend across several states and they can last for a long time, 6 to 12 hours. So um, this actually, and I think, I don't know if you can kind of see these kind of pouchy looking things, I think I mentioned this when we talked about the 10 cloud types. This is a type of cloud called a mematis cloud and it is unique to uh, thunderstorm cells and it forms under the anvil portion of the thunderstorm. Remember the anvil kind of leads the way the direction that the thunderstorm is moving. So I went ahead and brought in um, uh, this from uh, um, earlier. So this is a figure, if you printed out my slides, you don't have it here, but you had it earlier, where this is actually the anvil showing the direction of the storm movement. And so the mematis clouds would be under here, kind of pouchy looking things. Um, now, um, a lot of times I'll get students that say, did you see those weird clouds? And I, this might be what they're talking about. There's a lot of weird clouds out there. But I was in Burlington, and I saw these clouds. And these were actually photographed, I believe, in Keokuk. I have a, um, a friend here at SCC who forwarded these to me. So these actually are just amazing, July 09. <laughs> and if you saw these clouds, you might remember when I saw them anyway, there was no um, precipitation that developed before or afterwards. So, but they really look like mematis clouds. Very, very cool. Very cool pictures too. So a uh, squall line of thunderstorms. We, like I said, most likely will have them associated with a cold front. But actually, another type of front we call a dry line, and I know we talked about this when we talked about uh, fronts and air masses, but a dry line is between two types of air masses that are both warm. We have continental tropical, which is dry and warm, and we have continental, or excuse me, maritime tropical, which is moist and warm. And so this dry line is another place that we can definitely have lifting what's happening is that um, that dry warm that dry warm air is more dense, and so then that uh, warm moist air is lifted up. So basically, then we have a squall line of thunderstorms here. Um, if uh, storm chasers actually will, 
in, the, in our southwest chase these dry lines as potential for um, having activity to catch a tornado, basically. So this is another figure showing you this dry line that we would expect to have a squall line of thunderstorms across it. Um, we know it's a dry line. If we look at the dew point temperatures on the dry side, here's the dry side, dew point, remember that 30 degrees is the number here, 21 degrees, that's how far, 36 degrees, you need to cool the air down in order for condensation to occur. That's the dry side. If we compare that with the moist side, um, notice that you only have to cool the air down to 58, only cool it down to 36, only cool it, sorry, 63, only cool it down to 64 to 66. So this is the, the wet, moist side. So definitely that warm, dry air can go ahead and lift that warm, moist air right here. So the other type of system in which we have multiple thunderstorm cells um, uh, doing their thing is called a mesoscale convective complex. And I, I mentioned these are the blob ones. <laughs> so here is, uh, you're looking at a satellite image and uh, looking uh, at infrared information from the Earth's surface because what happens is, you know, infrared tells us temperature. And what happens is that these cloud tops are very cold. And uh, that is what we're looking for. This blob here is multiple thunderstorm cells. Okay, now, notice they can last a long time, you know, a half a day to several days. Mesoscale convective complexes. So these are the ones that actually, if you're kind of laying in your bed and you hear the rumbles and then all throughout the night you hear, you know, you basically have a thunderstorm going on all night long. This perhaps could be a mesoscale convective complex. Um, so uh, the multiple cells within either the mesoscale convective complex or the squall line, they kind of encourage each other to grow. Remember that um, they don't. They definitely will not be all at the same stage. The three stages are cumulus, mature, and dissipating. But the updrafts and the downdrafts in these three stages can kind of encourage the other one to grow. Um, mesoscale convective complexes, they don't need much wind shear. Uh, when we talk about the formation of tornadoes, tornadoes will need uh, wind shears. Um, mesocyclones that are developed in, in uh, supercells. I don't know if you listened to a, an earlier um, lecture. They need wind shear. But these don't need wind shear, these blobs. But what they do need is a lot of moisture. Um, where's my, they need a lot of moisture. And the source of their moisture is another jet stream. We've talked about two jet streams that are ongoing. This jet stream is called the nocturnal, so it happens at night, low-level jet stream. And actually, it is oftentimes the source of warm, moist air to keep these mesoscale convective complexes kind of booming.